guys, how's it going? Um, I'm back, I'm doing another chord lesson. Um, this one's going to be focusing on dominant chords uh, and inversions. I had done a video a while back, um, probably like a year or two ago, doing major and minor seven uh, inversions up and back on the neck, um, doing root six, root five, and root four chords. Um, for both major and minor seven, all the way up and back for all the inversions of them. Um, and I'll link that somewhere in this area uh, if you want to check that video out. But today I'm going to go over and do dominant chords, which are pretty fun. <clears throat> um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over each string set first and then break down the chords and going through. Um, so I'll do one set on the, with the low E as the root note. Uh, one set with the A as the root note, and then one set with the uh, D as the root note, or on the D string. <clears throat> uh, what I'm going to do a little different on this one is instead of just doing major 7 all the way up on each one, minor 7 on the all the way up on each string. Last time, um, I'm going to do a normal dominant 7 chord. So, for example, on the 6th string. Uh, focusing on the low E string and then the uh, D, G, and B strings for my uh, notes. And then I'm going to do a different dominant chord. Uh, so for the sixth string, I'm going to do dominant seven and then dominant 13. Uh, on the A string or fifth string root, I'm going to do a dominant seven and then dominant nine. Then, uh, to get fun, on the last one, I'm going to do dominant 7, and then I'm going to do uh, dominant 7 flat 9, uh, and do all the inversions all the way up. Uh, so I'll start with the 6 string root, like I said, the first one's going to be dominant 7, uh, next one's going to be dominant 13. So the first set of chords was just basic dominant 7 um, on G. So you've got a G dominant 7 chord. Uh, now what makes up a dominant chord in the event that you don't know is the um, easiest way to look at it is take either a major 7 or a minor 7 chord. Uh, you're going to take a major 7 chord. All you're going to do is turn the major 7th in the chord into a minor 7. So it's essentially root major third, fifth, and then a flat or minor seventh. Um, obviously, if you're doing a minor seven, you're just gonna raise the, uh, raise the third degree in the chord. Um, so in this particular example, we're doing G dominant seven, so it's going to be G, B, D, F to make up the chord. Um, the way I'm playing, I've got G on the root, got F uh, on the A or on the D string, B is playing on the G string, and D is on the B string. Uh, now for the inversions, in case you guys haven't watched the previous video or you're not familiar with inversions, I always use the building block explanation of what inversions are. Look at your chord as four building blocks. So you've got G, B, D, and F. So Right now, that's how it's set up. G is on the bottom. In order to make an inversion, you would pull G out of the bottom, so now B becomes the root note, and throw G back up there. So now you're building that same exact chord um, with the notes G, B, D, F, but now you're going to start it on B as the root. So you got dominant 7. So this would be our first inversion, uh, which means we're starting the chord on the third uh, the third note in the scale or in the chord. <clears throat> so B is now our root note. Now you're playing G on the D string. 
uh, you are then playing A, or sorry, D on your G string, and then F on your B string. Next inversion up, same thing, you're going to pull the B out, and now D is going to become the root note. So now you're going to build a dominant chord, or dominant 7 chord in G, starting with D as the root note. Same exact concept, uh, and then last but not least, starting on F. Um, so for these last two chords that I'm doing here, um, as I said, D is going to be on your root note, then you've got B on your D string on the 9th fret, you've got F on your G string on the 10th fret, uh, and then you've got G on top on your B string. And then the last inversion is the easiest to play. Uh, F is on your root note, so uh, 12th or 13th fret on the E string. And then you're just playing straight across 12 on the uh, D, G, and B strings. Uh, now the next one we're looking at is going to be the dominant 13s that I went over. Now when you start getting into bigger chords where you can't fit all of the notes in the chord itself, especially on guitar, you're kind of limited. Six, maybe seven, maybe eight, um, normally not so much notes. Um, I personally like keeping my chords down to four notes, uh, in case you didn't notice when I did my first run through of the chords. Um, I like only using four notes at a time, it seems like a more full, focused uh, voicing for most chords. Uh, but what we're going to do for the dominant 13 is we are going to, uh, you'll notice that we kept a good chunk of the chord itself. So you still got the same root, seventh, and third, but now we're going to add the sixth, where the fifth was, or in this case it's going to be referred to as the thirteenth. So you've essentially got a dominant seven chord, but instead of that top note you're playing uh, on the D, you're going to move that up to E on the B string. Um, so now this becomes a dominant thirteenth, dominant seventh chord with a thirteenth on top or a sixth on top depending on how you want to look at it. It's one of my favorite dominant voicings. Um, now, the first inversion of this is kind of a pain in the butt. And the other thing I'm going to explain is when I do these inversions, I'm not going to go in order um, necessarily theory and theory of what the notes are. Because if I did that, um, then I'd be going from root to third the dominant 7 and then the 13th all the way up here. Um, so instead, you're going to notice that the last two inversions are right next to each other. The 6th and the dominant 7. <coughs> Make more sense when I go through it. So you've got your dominant 7 chord here. Um, same thing, G on the bottom. F is going to be on your uh, D string on the 3rd fret. Uh, you've still got your B on the G string, 4th fret, and now you're playing E on the B string, so on the 5th fret. Um, now this first inversion is going to be the hardest chord to play in the entire set that I'm doing for this lesson. But it is pretty gorgeous. Um, so now you're going to have the B on the root, just like we did with the dominant 7th inversion. But now you're going to be kind of spread out, so you've got 7th fret, B on your low E string. G is going to be on your D string on the 5th fret. E is now going to be on the 9th fret of your G string. And then uh, your top note in this case is going to be the F. So 6th fret on B. Now these next two inversions, like I said, are right next to each other. Super easy. You're really only going to change your note on the low E string and the D string. So the first one, starting on E, uh, you've got 12th fret, then you're going to play 15th fret on your uh, D string, 12 on the G and B. And now for this last inversion, all you're going to do is take that E, move it up to F, and then you're going to take that F and move that down. 
Down one fret. So now you've got 13 on the low E, 14 on the D string, and then 12 still on the G and B. All right, so now I'll go over the uh, root five chords real quick. I'll run through them and then break them down as well. Alright, so same concept, dominant 7 chord, now we're starting on C, um, so in theory, you're taking the same thing, major chord, and drop the 7th um, to a minor 7th. Uh, in this case, the voice would be C, E, G, and A sharp, or B flat, depending on how you're looking at it. So our first voicing is uh, fairly basic, it's just uh, playing C on the A string. So third fret, then you're gonna be playing the G or the fifth on the uh, fifth fret of the uh, D string. Uh, then you're gonna be playing B flat or A sharp on the third fret of the G string. And last but not least, E or the third in the chord on the fifth fret of the B string. Same thing, we're just gonna move the inversions up so the first note um, that would come in sequence after the C would be E. So 7th fret on the A string is where you're going to start. Uh, I have been using this voicing a lot lately. It's pretty gorgeous. So you've got E on the bottom there on the 7th fret. Then you're playing 8th fret on the D string. 5th fret on the G string, 8th fret again on the B. First inversion, C dominant 7. Um, voicing after that, another very comfortable, easy voicing to play. Uh, now we're starting on the, uh, on the G, or the 5th uh, in the chord. Like I said, pretty easy voicing. 10 on the A string, 10 on the D string, 9 on the G, and uh, 11 on the B. So in this case, you've actually got your B flat or A sharp on top. And last but not least, our final uh, inversion for this chord. Um, now, of course, you've got the B flat or A sharp, or dominant 7, however you want to think about it, is now the root note. So this would be your third inversion of a C dominant 7. And you are going to start 13th fret on the A string, 13th fret on the D string, 12th fret on the G, and 13th fret on the B string. There it is. Um, second set of chords. I did a dominant 9 for this as opposed to the 13th we did last time. Um, and you're going to take, we're taking the same concept. We're just pulling out the 5th um, because the 5th is the least important note in a chord for the most part. Um, reason being, major chord, in a major seven, the fifth is the same as in a minor chord. It's always that same distance. It's a perfect interval. So if you have to deduct or take out a note in order to add another note, in order to add an extension, generally you start with the fifth or the fourth or something like that, a note that doesn't change very much um, from chord to chord. So now, doing a dominant ninth chord. Um, this is going to be voiced, same idea, we're playing C, E, B flat, and then a D on top. Um, uh, and this one's actually voiced straight ahead, the same as you would normally play it like on a piano. C is on your root on the A string, third fret, uh, second fret on the D, note E. B flat on your G string, third fret, and D your dominant, uh, or your nine, sorry, in this case. Your nine is on top, third fret of the B string. And now, because the, uh, the ninth could also be referred to as the second, 
we're going to play that first. So our first inversion is actually going to be using the ninth as the root note. So we've got our dominant nine on C. Then in order to get to the next note, which would be the ninth second, which is D, we're just going to go up to the fifth fret on the A string. Uh, I'm playing fifth fret on A, eighth fret on D, fifth on the G and B string. Our next inversion is going to be on the E or the third. Uh, this is another very interesting sounding chord voicing. Uh, so you're starting on the seventh fret on the A string. So it's going to go seven, ten on the D, seven on the G, eleven on the B. I tend to like those tensiony sounding chords, so I'm using that one quite a lot lately as well. And last but not least, a little bit of a stretcher. The final inversion, almost sounds like it would be in Zelda, is going to start on the 13th fret of your A uh, or your B flat note, A sharp. You've got 13 on the A string, 12 on the D, 9 on the G, which is a bit of a stretch, and 13 on your B string. So that's your set of dominant uh, ninth chords as well. Uh, so now we're going to move on to the root four ones. Sorry for a couple of those little flubs on the uh, the last chord voicings. They're a little painful. Um, so starting off, same concept. Uh, we're just doing a normal dominant seven chord. Um, you'll notice the shape itself. I'm just using the top four strings. Uh, so D G B E. The form itself is uh, very similar to the root five shape. All we're doing is where I did a. Uh, Three five three five. This one is three five four five. We're doing an F dominant seven in this case. I'm just going straight across in the third fret. Um, so the voicing in this uh, chord would be F A C and then E flat would be your dominant seventh. Um, so I'm starting third fret as I mentioned. Third fret on D. 5th fret on G, 4th fret on B, and 5th fret on E. So you've got F as the bottom note, uh, you've got your C, sorry, C on the G string on the 5th fret, E flat is on your B string on the 4th fret, and A on top on the 5th uh, fret of the E string. First inversion. Um, so this voicing, obviously you're starting with A on the root. So you've got 7th fret on the uh, D string, 8th fret on the G, 6th fret on the uh, B, and 8th fret again on the E string. Um, the next two voicings, are, again, are two very, very easy voicings to play. First one starting with C on the root, you're just playing straight across, barring the 10th fret. And all you do is on the high E, go up one fret. So you got 10 on the D, 10 on the G, 10 on the B, and then 11 on the E string. And then uh, your last inversion uh, with the E flat on the root, you're playing same thing, barring straight across 13th fret. But this time, you're going to go up to 13 on the G string. So you've got... Pretty easy. Uh, and last but not 
down to be is our dominant seven flat nine chord. Now the the actual voicing of this chord, we're doing the same thing we did with the dominant nine, except we're obviously going to flat the uh, the ninth or the second, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, so for this voicing, first voicing is pretty simple, kind of a dark, mysterious sounding chord. Uh, the voicing for this is going to be F A B e flat G flat. Uh, now again, I'm going to do the same thing I did with the last one, uh, or on the dominant nine chord. I'm going to play the ninth or the uh, what would be the third or fourth inversion, depending on how you want to look at it. I'm going to play that actually with the first inversion because that would be the note right after it's a flatted second or flatted nine. So that's the note right there. <clears throat> so our first inversion with the root note on the bottom, the F. Uh, you've got F on your root. A is going to be your second note on the G string, second fret. E flat is on your uh, B string on the fourth fret. And last but not least, second fret on the high E, G flat, which is your flat nine. Uh, now to do the next inversion, we're going to be using the ninth as the root. So you're only moving the root note up one fret, uh, but it makes the whole chord a little more uncomfortable. Uh, so this is going to be next inversion. There we go. Um, you've got four, or fourth fret on the D string, second, or A on the G string, E flat on your uh, fourth fret on the B string, and then F is now on top on the uh, E string. First fret. Which is kind of a painful chord to play down here. Um, now your next inversion, we're jumping up to the A, which would be your third in the uh, chord. And you'll notice that this looks almost identical in terms of shape as the, uh, the third inversion or sorry, the inversion starting with the third for the last set of chords. Kind of like this one. Um, it's the same thing, seven on the bottom note, or on your uh, D string, on your A, 10 fret on your G string, seventh fret again on the B, and 11 on the E string. Last but not least, our final inversion uh, using the E flat as the root. Uh, 13th fret on the D string or your E flat. Then you've got G flat uh, on the G string, 11th fret. Uh, A is going to be on the B string, 10th fret. And F is on top, 13th fret of the E string. So there you have it, um, there's your inversions uh, for dominant sevens, um, and then I gave you 13th on the low E, dominant nine on the uh, A string shape, um, and then the dominant seven flat nine on the D root form uh, chord. Uh, it's good to do this with any chords, any, any kind of chord you have, I mean I just took but six chords and quadrupled the knowledge of what they are. <clears throat> so taking any chord you know and doing the same thing, all you've got to do is pick it apart and find where you can where you can comfortably play the notes. And the other nice thing is, if you're comping under somebody, um, under someone's solo or anything like that, you're not just stuck to the same. Uh, you can play the whole thing using inversions. You can play around with the inversion. Uh, play around using different inversion voicings um, around the fretboard. 
and just screw with and you know imposing different chords that you can always use. I like using that dominant 13 shape on the third of the major chord. So if I'm playing something. It's a great thing to know. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this lesson, uh, please subscribe. Check out my Facebook page, anything like that. I've always got music going up. Uh, my CD hopefully being done here soon. I'm just waiting on the final tracks to come in. Um, if you enjoy lessons like this, or the last one I did, or the other major, minor inversions lesson I did, please let me know. I'll gladly do more. Uh, just let me know what it is you guys would like me to do. And thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.